Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to episode 6 of the Corporation Code. This morning we are going to discuss about um, Title 6 and Title 7 of the Corporation Code. We will group these two topics because Title 6 about meetings is a short one. So we will combine it with Title 7 which will talk about the shares of stocks. Okay, let us proceed. Title six meetings, okay? Now meetings of the board of directors or trustees may either be regular or special under section 49 of the corporation code. Now once the meeting is set for a regular one, now it is held on a monthly basis unless otherwise provided in the bylaws. On the other hand, a special meeting which by nature will depend on the need, no? If the board of directors will feel the need to set for a special meeting, when you say special meeting, it is a particular meeting to attend to a specific or urgent need of the corporation. So since it is special by nature, it is subject to a contingency or when the need will arise, then by nature it can be called upon any time by the board of the directors or the president or as provided in the bylaws, okay? So if it's a regular meeting, it is held monthly. If it's a regular, a special rather, special meeting, it is upon call by the president or as provided for in the bylaws, okay? Now, the notice must be sent at least one day prior to the scheduled hearing unless otherwise provided for by in the bylaws, okay? Now, this notice can be waived expressly or impliedly. What do we mean by this? For example, a meeting was called and uh, uh, the meeting was set um, uh, less than one day before the notice. Now, if a particular uh, uh, member of the board of director will have to appear personally or to attend the meeting despite the fact that there was no sufficient lapse of time for the meeting, then that is a waiver or an implied waiver of the period of time for the notice, which is supposed to be one day. Now, the meeting can be held uh, within or without or in or outside the Philippines unless the bylaws would require otherwise. Now, again, we're talking about the meetings of the board of directors or trustees. Now, when it comes to quorum, a majority of the number of directors or trustees as fixed in the Articles of Incorporation shall constitute a quorum for the purpose of transacting the business of the corporation, except upon or except if the uh, Articles of Incorporation or the bylaws provide for a greater majority. No? If the meeting is for the election of officers, which requires the vote of all the members of the board. Now, in terms of quorum, as a general rule, the uh, quorum would constitute the majority of the board of directors. When you say majority, we have a formula 50% or one half plus one. Now, take note that the articles of incorporation or the bylaws can provide for a greater majority. Flashed in your screen class, is what I highlighted there, what the term or the phrase a greater majority. Take note class that the articles of incorporation or the bylaws can provide for an increased number or a higher number of quorum because section 25 provides that the articles can only provide for a greater majority. What do we mean by this? This means that the Articles of Incorporation cannot dispense with quorum or provide for a lesser majority. 50% plus one or one half plus one then is the minimum requirement for quorum to exist. The only thing that the Articles or bylaws can do is to what? Provide for a higher or greater majority, which is not a simple majority or what we call the absolute majority. Okay. Now, if the meeting no, intended for the board is for the election of the officers, no, um, then uh, the requirement of quorum is what? It should be 
majority of all the members of the board. That means an absolute majority. Because class, as we have discussed previously, there are two kinds of majority, simple majority and absolute majority. When you say simple majority, that is majority of all present directors constituting a quorum. So if it is five, then three no, uh, is the quorum. And then uh, simple majority of that composition is two. Whereas if the matter to be taken up by the board pertains to the election of officers who are the corporate officers, the president, the secretary, the treasurer. Now, if that is the agenda of the meeting of the board, then the law requires absolute majority or majority of all members of the board. Meaning to say, what? Um, uh, a president can only be elected by an absolute majority vote or vote of, of a majority of all the members of the board. Meaning to say, three over five. Now, in the meeting of the board of directors, it is the president who presides unless the bylaws provides otherwise under section 54. Now, class, take note that some corporation would include a, a CEO, chief, no, chief executive officer or CEO or chairman of the board. No? Uh, bukod sa president, meron pa silang CEO, so, uh, chief executive officer or chairman of the board. Now, if there is a chairman of the board or a CEO, then the meeting is presided by them or by him, rather, no, and not the president. The president would preside the meeting of the board only in the absence of a chairman or a CEO as provided for in the bylaws. Now, let us talk about the meeting of the stockholders. We know for a fact that the stockholders is different from the board of directors. It is the stockholders who elect the board of directors. And the board of directors, you know, according to the doctrine of centralized management, is the one who governs, who directs, who manages the affairs or the business of the corporation. Okay. Now, in the meetings of stockholders or members, now, it can also be either regular or special. A regular meeting of the stockholders is annually, no, on a date fixed in the bylaws. And if there is no date fixed in the bylaws, on any date in April of every year, as determined by the board of directors or trustees. Now, class, you will take note that the meeting of the board is what? Every year or annual. No, bakit kaya every year class? Bakit kaya every year a meeting ng stockholders? That is for the purpose of electing or voting in the election of the board of directors because the term of a board of director is one year. So they will have to meet on a regular meeting no? annually. Now, when does the meeting should take place? It should take place on a specific date fixed in the bylaws. Now, in the absence of a provision in the bylaws or in the absence of a specific date no, by which the annual meeting is to be held by the stockholders, then no, any date on April but the specific date will have to be provided for by the board of directors or the trustees. So, class, tandaan nyo yung April. Baka mamaya yung tanong sa inyo sa exam, May. Now, take note ah, that this will only apply in the absence of a particular setting in the bylaws. Now, the stockholders would also have special meetings, in which case, no, uh, it is, uh, this can be called at any time as may be deemed necessary or as provided for in the bylaws. Okay? Now, there is a required notice for the meetings of the stockholders also. In a regular meeting, there must be written, uh, not sorry, the notice must be in writing and it must be sent to stockholders or members of record at least two weeks. Class, ang tagal, di ba? Mapapansin ninyo ang meeting ng stockholders, ang tagal ng notice. 
two weeks, unlike sa board of directors, pwedeng isang araw lang. Why? Because class, the board of directors is the one running the affairs of the corporation. So they are corporate officers. They are president, secretary, treasurer, or member of the board. Necessarily, they are working. No, they are working for the corporation. Now, the stockholders, now most of them are passive investors. They do not go to the corporation on a daily basis, which is why class. The notice required under the corporation code is at least two weeks prior to the meeting unless there is a different period um, as stipulated or as provided for in the bylaws. Now, in a special meeting at least one week prior me, uh, prior notice, it must also be in the form of a written notice unless otherwise provided in the bylaws. Now, just like in the meeting of a board of directors or of the board of directors, notice of any meeting may be waived expressly or impliedly by the stockholder or the member under Section 50 of the Corporation Code. Now, class, if the board of directors will ha uh, can hold meetings within or without or in or outside the Philippines, Section 51 provides that the meeting of the stockholders will have to be conducted in the city or municipality where the principal office of the corporation is located, no? and if practicable, in the principal office of the corporation itself. Plus, Yan ang difference ng meeting ng board of directors and the stockholders when it comes to what the, the required period of time for the notice to be sent out and the place of uh, the meeting no, in the board of directors. It can be anywhere in the Philippines or even abroad. But the stockholders class has a limitation. They can only hold meeting as if practicable in the principal office of the corporation. No? Or if not, in the, in the city, any place within the city or municipality where the principal office of the corporation is located. Okay. In the meetings of the stockholders or the members, it is also the president who presides unless the bylaws would provide for a chairman of the board or a CEO, chief executive order, uh, sorry, chief executive officer in which case they will be the one to preside the meetings of the stockholders. That is all for Title VI, no meetings. Those are the important ones. Just remember the distinction between a meeting of the board and a meeting of the stockholders. By the way, class, this is something which has not been included in the PowerPoint presentation. Class, okay, may, uh, we will discuss about proxy. No, later on, take note class. That proxy, no, yung proxy meaning to say if a particular person is not available no, to attend the meeting, then he can just um, sign the proxy, proxy form. Meaning to say, parang sabi niya class, pag ninong ka o ninang ka, di ba, tas di ka makaka-attend, meron kang ipapadalang representative. That concept is also the same in, the, uh, in case of a corporation. Pag may prox, pag may meeting ka, hindi ka pwede, pwede kang magpadala ng representative. Now, can proxy be used in the meetings of the stockholders? Answer, yes. But, can the board of the, of, can a member of the board or a corporate officer, the president, the treasurer, the secretary, can send his representative in the form of a proxy to attend the meeting of the board of directors or board of trustees? Answer, no. No, no, no. Why class? Kasi class, if the board of directors will be allowed to attend the meeting through a representative, it will defeat the purpose of that particular person being elected by the stockholders. The fact that you are, you are chosen, you are elected, no? because of your personal qualification, no? uh, would mean that the stockholders prefers or the stockholders prefer this particular person to manage the affairs of the corporation. And it cannot be delegated to another one without the permission of the stockholders. Actually, class, hindi talaga inaalaw ang proxy in the meetings of the board. 
Okay, let us go to Title 7. Stocks, Stockholders, and Subscription Contract. Okay, we start with Trust Fund Doctrine. Class, this is very important. Trust Fund Doctrine means that the assets of the corporation or the assets of a corporation, no? as represented by its capital stock are that are trust funds to be maintained unimpaired and to be used to pay the corporate creditors. Under the trust fund doctrine, there can be no distribution of assets among the stockholders without payment of the corporate debts. Okay, in other words, in short, ang ibig sabihin ng trust fund doctrine class, hindi ka pwedeng magbayad, hindi ka pwedeng mag-distribute ng profit sa stockholders hanggat hindi nababayaran ang corporate creditors. In other words, under the trust fund doctrine, the corporate creditors has a preference in terms of distribution of profits or the capital of the corporation. You cannot distribute the profits without first settling the obligation to corporate debts. Okay. Now, any such disposition of the profits is fraud on the creditors of a corporation who extend credit on good faith or in good faith of the outstanding capital stock and therefore void. Class, you will remember, under the loan obligation and contracts, di ba, class? Oh, I know you, you remember, di ba? Under the loan obligation and contracts, if there is fraud, what is the status of the contract? Now, if there is fraud, what is the status of the contract? Wala kang marinig kasi recorded lecture. Pero siguro kung hindi recorded lecture to, nakailang tawag na ako siguro, mga lima, wala pang makasagot. The answer is voidable. No? If there is the presence of, or if there exists fraud, then the contract becomes voidable. Voidable class. Voidable, voidable, voidable. Class, that rule is not absolute. There is an exception to that. What is the exception? In case that the corporation will distribute its profit or its capital no, to, the, to the stockholders or to the members of the board or the corporate officers without first settling or paying corporate debts, then it amounts to fraud no fraud on the creditors but despite the fact that there is fraud you do not apply the rules on the law and obligation and contracts which will make the uh, the payment voidable instead under the corporation code if there is pay payment in fraud of creditors or the corporate creditors then that payment becomes void 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 Again, do not apply the general rule under the law on obligation and contracts because there is a specific provision of law which provides that payment in fraud of corporate creditors make the payment void, void, void. Meaning to say, it is legally non-existent. It produces no legal effect. Now, this is in accordance with the case of Philippine Trust Corporation versus Rivera, 144, Philippine Reports, four six, page 469. Okay. Now, class, under the Trust Fund Doctrine, the capital stock, no, the property, and assets of a corporation are regarded as equity in trust for the payment of corporate creditors. In short, that is what I mean by the Trust Fund Doctrine. Now, let us go to subscription contract. Class, subscription contract only means that uh, this is a contract for the acquisition of unissued stock in an existing corporation or a corporation still to be formed. Kaya class, kahit ang corporation hindi pa narerehistro, nare pwede na siyang magbenta ng unissued shares of stocks. No? Ayan ang sabi ng batas, a, a, a subscription contract is a contract for the acquisition of unissued, unissued stock in an existing corporation or a corporation still to be formed. This notwithstanding the fact that the parties refer to it as a purchase or some other contract. Okay, under section 60. Now, how does one become a shareholder in a corporation? Now, paano ka magiging stockholder or shareholder? 
you can enter into a subscription contract with an existing corporation. No? Now, uh, you, are, you will be deemed as a stockholder upon acceptance of the corporation of his offer to subscribe, whether the consideration is fully paid or not. Alam na natin yan under Section 13, di ba? Kahit hindi fully paid yung, stock, yung shares of stocks mo or your, your subscription, you can still be considered for purposes of determination of stockholders as a stockholder of the corporation. You can also purchase treasury shares from the corporation. No? Treasury shares class, this is the one which has previously been issued by the corporation and was fully paid but was subsequently reacquired by the corporation. Now class, the, the treasury share can still be sold by the corporation. Now if you purchase treasury shares from the corporation, you become a stockholder. Now, you can also be stockholder if you acquire shares from an existing shareholder by sale or any other contract. Now, class, you can purchase shares from the corporation itself. Now, what are the types of shares that you can purchase from the corporation? The unissued shares no? uh, of a corporation which is existing or is yet to be formed. You can also purchase treasury shares. And you can purchase shares from an existing stockholder. No, meaning to say a stockholder or a shareholder can transfer his interest in the corporation through sale or any other contract. Usually, an class deed of sale or pending assignment of shares. Okay. Now, kinds of subscription contract. There are two kinds. Pre-incorporation, meaning before incorporation and post-incorporation subscription, which is entered into upon or after incorporation. Now, let us go to the first kind, pre-incorporation subscription. A subscription for shares of stocks of a corporation still to be formed shall be irrevocable for a period of at least six months from the date of subscription, unless all of the other subscribers consent to the revocation or incorporation of the said corporation fails to materialize within six months or within a longer period as may be stipulated in the contract of subscription, provided that pre-incorporation subscription may be revoked no, after submission of the articles. Oh no, again, sorry. No pre-incorporation subscription may be revoked after submission of the articles of incorporation to the SEC. Meaning to say, class, after that, after submission of the articles of incorporation of the SEC, you can no longer revoke your subscription contract. Okay. Now, what can you use as payment no, for the purchase of a shares of stocks? You can pay through cash, property, labor, or services actually rendered to a corporation, prior corporate obligations, Amount transferred from unrestricted retain earning to the stated capital in case of declaration of stock dividends. No outstanding shares in exchange for stocks in the event of reclassification or conversion. Take note, class, that promissory notes or future services are not valid considerations. Meaning to say, class, that you cannot use as payment for the purchase of shares of stocks a promissory note. Kasi bakit class? Promissory note kasi class, although it is an evidence of credit, it is not a credit in itself. No? It is not a credit in itself. Promissory note or future service. The only kind of service that can be used as consideration for the payment of stocks is what? Labor or services which is actually rendered. No, not which is yet to be rendered. Okay. Now, what is a share of stock or shares of stock? A, shares of, a share of stock in a corporation constant, constitute intangible personal property of the stockholder. Now, intangible personal property of the stockholder, which he can contract with as in any other form of property like assignment, assignment no, by way of disposition or pledge by way of encumbrance. Anong ibig sabihin nito, class? Now, shares of stocks, class, 
no, is an intangible personal property. When you say intangible, you cannot touch the shares of stocks. No, the certificate of, certificate of stocks is only the evidence of the shares, but the share itself is an intangible personal property. No, intangible. Now, this intangible personal property can be transferred no, in the form of assignment or sale, and you can pledge it by way of encumbrance class. Do not use the term chattel mortgage. Now we will go into the study of uh, um, credit transactions. Kasi class, pag personal property ang sinangla mo or ginawa mong security for the payment of the loan, you can execute either chattel mortgage or pledge. Ha? Chattel mortgage or pledge. Both of which will have to deal with personal properties. But for shares of stocks, do not say chattel mortgage of shares of stocks. No? A more appropriate term is pledge. Ha? Pledge. We will go into that when we reach the study or of the law on credit transactions. Okay? Now, shares of stocks, therefore, are properties and have intrinsic pecuniary value to the shares of stocks. They do not, however, represent proprietary rights of stockholders to the assets or properties of the corporation. Okay. Now, these are the characteristics of a share, share, share of stocks. Uh, they are flashed in your screen. You can just read it. It's self-explanatory. Okay. Now, I want you to remember item number seven. Now, it is purely inchoate or in sheer expectancy. Class, anong ibig sabihin ng mga English na yan? No? It is purely inchoate or sheer expectancy of a right in the following after payment of corporate debts and obligation. Class, when you say purely inchoate, that means that the right has not been vested. Kasi dalawang kinds of right. Isang inchoate, isang vested rights. Pag inchoate class, meron ka lang mere expectancy. Hindi pa siya ibinibigay sa'yo. Kasi class, pag nalugi ang korporasyon na yan, wala kang makukuha. No investment mo will yield no return. That is why ang shares of stocks is considered as purely inchoate. It represents your interest in the corporation. But it is that interest is only in Kuwait. Hindi pa siya vested. You only have a sheer expectancy. It is subject to a condition that the corporation will earn profits. No? Kaya ang sabi dyan, it is purely in Kuwait. Now, it is purely in Kuwait or sheer expectancy because you cannot manage the corporation unless and until that you are elected in the board of directors. No? It is also in Kuwait or, ex or a sheer expectancy in the sense that the share in the profits and assets of the corporation no, can only be done during dissolution or when the board of directors declare for what? Um, cash dividends or property dividends or other forms of dividends. Now, class, let us relate the corporation code to the law on negotiable instruments. Question, are shares of stocks negotiable instrument? No? Is a share of stock a negotiable instrument? Plus, some of the materials that you can find online, they will say that it is negotiable. Or it is quasi-negotiable. Do not answer that in the exam. That is a wrong answer. There is no such thing as a quasi-negotiable instrument. Wala yan sa batas. Sinabi ng batas under Section 1 ng Negotiable Instruments Law, an instrument can be considered as negotiable under the following circumstances, etc. Et it must be signed by the maker or drawer, etc. No? If all of the requisites of negotiability are met, then the instrument becomes negotiable in character. But if one, 
No, if one of the requisites of a negotiable instrument is absent, you declare it as non-negotiable. Wala tayo sa gitna. Dalawa lang yan. Negotiable, non-negotiable. Isa lang ang mawala under section 1. Ang tawag na dyan, non-negotiable. Walang quasi. Ha? Walang quasi negotiable. So do not rely on that reference. Mali yun, class. Shares of stocks no, or, or a share of stock is not negotiable. Why? Kasi class, it does not contain an unconditional promise or order to pay sum of money. No, unang-una sinabi nga natin kanina, let us go back. No, that a share of stock is purely inquit. You only have an a right of expectancy that after the solution of the corporation, you can share in the assets. Or if a profit is declared by the board, you can share in the distribution of profits which is why class no a share of stock no is not a negotiable instrument because it is not an unconditional promise or order to pay a sum of money which is which makes it non-negotiable because it is conditional it is subject to the contingency or the happening of a condition which is the corporation acquiring or earning profits. Kaya class, huwag kayo mag-re-rely dyan. Mag-ingat din kayo sa mga binabasa niyo mga resources. Okay? Now, let us go to watered stock. No, ang watered stock class, parang literal meaning yan. Ibig sabihin, tinubig yung stocks. No, bakit tinawag na tinubig? No, kasi pag, pag tinawag na tinubig, nagbenta yung korporasyon Ah, nagbenta ang korporasyon ng shares of stocks less than its par value or issued value in case of no par value shares. Ha, again, a watered stock is where the shares issued no, as fully paid up when in fact the consideration agreed to and accepted by the board was less than its par value or issued value of the shares. Na ang tawag natin dyan, class, watered stock. Kasi class, ibig sabihin, wala talagang assets ang corporation. Or mas mababa ang assets ng corporation kaysa doon sa dineclare ng board of directors. Kasi class, di ba sinasabi natin before that uh, the reason no, why the corporation would state a value or a par value of the shares so that the public no, can be assured that they are dealing with a corporation which has sufficient assets. Now, ang nangyayari minsan, in order for the board to make it appear that the corporation no, has sufficient uh, assets no, or capital, ang ginagawa nila, nag issue sila ng shares na pinapalabas nilang fully paid, pero yung pala, it was issued less than its par value. When that happens, you call that watered stock. Class, bawal yan. Bawal yan sa corporation code. Okay. Now, class, because this is a violation of the corporation code, sino ang liable dyan? Of course, yung board of directors. No, any director of a corporation consenting to the issuance of stocks for a consideration less than its par value or issued value or for a consideration in any form other than cash valued in excess of its fair value. For example, class, ang binayad mo sa shares of stocks no, is property. No? Property, for example, house and lot or building. Pag yan ang binayad mo to purchase shares of stocks, tapos in overvalue, no? ginack up yung price. No? Ano din yan? Uh, watered stocks din yan. Why? Because the consideration used no, was overvalued. No, was overvalued or in excess of its fair value. Now, the board of director consenting to the issuance of a watered stock is liable personally unless he objected um, in the issuance of the shared, shares of stocks or watered stock in writing. The objection of the board of directors must be in writing. Otherwise, he will be liable solidarily 
with the stockholder concern to the corporation and its creditors. Now, the, the board of director consenting to the issuance of a share of stocks, with, which is watered stock, no, or which is a watered stock in nature, now, what is the liability of the um, consenting board of director? Solidary liability. No, solidary liability with the stockholder concern. Now, let us go back in the law on obligation and contracts. When you say solidary liability, that means that the corporation can opt to go after the director or the stockholder and claim for the entire amount. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng solidary liability as opposed to a joint liability. Now, the stockholder or the board of director is solidarily liable for the amount no, of the difference between the fair value received and the par value at the time of the purchase. No? or the fair value received at the time of the issuance of stocks and the par value or issued value of the same. Yung difference non class, nung, nung par value, at saka doon sa actual payment. No? Yung difference noon, yung margin noon, yun ang magiging liability or solidary liability of the board and the stockholder concerned. Okay. So that is a watered stock. Take note again, class. Important yan, shares of stocks, no, watered stock. It is a shared issued as fully paid, but it was paid for less than the par value or issued value. No, who is liable in case of the issuance of a watered stock? No, any director of the corporation or officer of the corporation consenting to the issuance of a watered stock. No, and if you fail to object in writing, you will be solidarity liable with the stockholders with respect to the, to the difference of the, pair, the fair value and the par value of the share. Take note and take note. Section 65 is an important provision. Again, to my students, you have to put a star on it. You have to master the provision of Section 65. Okay. Now, class, let us go to the delinquent shares. Delinquent shares will be found or is are found no, uh, from section 67 to 70. Basayan yan, class. Important din yan. Okay. Now, class, the corporation has two remedies in order to sell a delinquent share. No, It can be either judicially or by filing a case in court it could also be extra judicially now the procedure laid down in the corporation code is the extra judicial remedy meaning to say that the corporation does not need to go to court in order to sell a delinquent share of stocks excuse me okay now, what is the first step before the corporation can sell a delinquent share? The first step is the sending of the notice of call. When you say call, it is demand to pay sent by the board of directors for the payment of the balance of the subscription. Kasi class, once you have subscribed to shares of stocks, no? Nakalagay doon kung kailan mo babayaran yung balance. Now, if there is no agreed date by which the balance, balance of the subscription is to be paid, then it is payable upon call or notice of call or payment or uh, demand to pay the balance of the purchase price. Okay. Now, the notice of call must be served or must be received by the stockholder either personally or by registered mail. No? Now, if the stockholder does not pay the amount due on the date designated in the notice, then the board will have to issue a resolution of notice of delinquency. Huh? Tandaan niyo yung procedure class, ha? 
the board of directors will have to make a call in the absence of a specific date fixed in the subscription contract or purchase agreement of the shares to demand payment of the balance of the, the subscription. Now, this notice must be served to the stockholder either personally or by registered mail. Take note, class, that publication at this point in time is not necessary. Tandaan nyo yan. Importante yan. Publication of the notice of call is not necessary. Now, sa notice of call class, nakalagay dyan kung kailan babayaran yung, subs yung balance ng subscription. Pag hindi ka nakabayad with the, within the time frame, then the board will have to issue a resolution which is called as notice of what? Delinquency. So take note class that a, shares of, a share of stock which has not been paid, no? which has not been fully paid upon call by the board of directors will only be declared delinquent after the particular stockholder fails to pay within the specified time in the notice of call. Hindi ko mo hindi ka nakabayad pag pinadalhan ka ng notice of call, delinquente ka na. Tandaan nyo yan. It is only when no, the particular stockholders fail to pay upon the specific period of time as provided for in the notice of call that such shares of stocks will be declared as delinquent. Now, class, after the issuance of the board of resolu or, or the board resolution, no, declaring a particular share of shares of stocks to be delinquent, eto na yung procedure. Meron ng publication in a newspaper of general circulation in the province or city where the principal office of the corporation is located. So, doon na ginajaryo. Ang ginajaryo, class, hindi yung notice of call, kundi yung board resolution. No Board resolution declaring the shares of stocks as delinquent. Okay? It must be published once a week for two consecutive weeks. Huh? Okay, take note of that. Then, the publication must contain the amount due plus accrued interest, the date, time, and place of the sale. Now, these notices are jurisdictional. Now, class, bakit ba pinapadyaryo ang, 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 ang board resolution declaring a particular shares of stocks as delinquent? Ginadyaryo yan, class, kasi ibebenta yan in a public auction. Kaya nakalagay kung magkano yung utang o yung balance plus accrued interest. At nilalagay din dyan kung kailan ibebenta or i ibebenta in a public auction yung particular delinquent shares of stocks. Okay. Take note of the procedure flashed in your screens. Okay. In the public auction, the higher bid, the highest bidder is the one who is willing to pay the amount of the balance of the subscription for the least number of shares. Tanda ano yung phrase na yan. No, the highest bidder no, is the one who is willing to pay the amount of the balance for the least number of shares. Sa pinakamaliit na number of shares. Kasi pag pinakamaliit yung binid niya, class, ibig sabihin, siya yung highest amount for each share. Okay, now, after the bidding, the corporation will give the highest bidder a certificate of stock in, in the number of his bid, no, while the remaining number, if any, will be issued a certificate of stock in favor of the original subscriber ha as fully paid. Okay, take note of that procedure. Okay. Now, class, minsan, dyan sa mga public auction, kahit ijaryo mo, walang nag appear in order to bid, no? In case that there are no bidders, then the corporation must bid for the whole number of shares 
regardless of how much the stockholder has paid which shall then pertain to the corporation as fully paid treasury stocks or treasury shares. Pag walang bidder class, bibilihin ng korporasyon yung entire number of shares regardless of how much the stockholder has originally paid. Now, pag binili ng korporasyon yung shares of stocks regardless of the uh, how much the original stockholders has paid, then it shall pertain to the corporation as fully paid treasury, treasury shares or treasury stocks. Kasi, again, the definition of a treasury share it is that it has been issued no, and fully paid and subsequently reacquired by the corporation. Kaya, class, pag ang corporation ang bumili ng delinquent shares, in a public auction, babayaran niya yan ng buo. Kasi ang sabi ng batas, ang treasury share, it has been what? Previously issued and fully paid. Kaya babayaran niya ng buo kahit meron binayad ang original subscriber. Now, when the corporation no, subsequently reacquires its fully paid issued shares, then it becomes a fully paid Treasury stocks or treasury shares. Now, class, what is the effect of a share which is declared as delinquent? Meron bang effect ang delinquency? Now, the answer is yes. If a share of stock is declared delinquent, no, that particular stockholder cannot vote and be voted upon in the election of the board of directors. Hindi rin siya pwedeng umattend ng stockholders meeting. Okay. Now, but question, meron pa rin bang natitirang karapatan ang isang delinquent stockholder? No? Again, hindi siya pwedeng bumotos or, or maiboto sa election ng board of directors. Hindi rin siya pwedeng umattend ng stockholders meeting. But meron pa bang residual rights ang isang delinquent stockholder? The answer is yes. Pwede pa rin siyang mag-receive ng dividend. So, diniscuss na natin to depending on the type of dividend. Pag cash dividend class, ang dinistribute ng board, yung cash na ibibigay sa iyo in proportion to your shares will be applied in the unpaid balance or the balance of the subscription. Now, what if what has been declared by the board is a stock dividend? That stock dividend, which is granted to you as a stockholder, will be withhold or will be withheld until the unpaid balance is fully paid. In other words, class, hindi mo na ilalagay sa pangalan mo hanggat hindi mo nababayaran Yung, yung balance ng subscription. Okay. Now, uh, the stockholder shall not be entitled to notice of the regular or special meetings of the stockholder kasi nga, wala na siyang right to attend the meetings of the stockholder. So, hindi na rin siya entitled to a notice. But, class, take note of item D. Stockholders' delinquent shares will be included nevertheless in the determination of a quorum for the shareholdings. Kahit hindi siya makaka-attend, bibilangin pa rin yung shares niya kung, uh, kung aalamin ang quorum. Okay. Take note, class, that the auction sale must be conducted not less than 30 days nor more than 60 days from the date of the, that the stocks has become delinquent. Take note of that time period. Okay. Who is the highest bidder? No, again, those who will who shall offer to pay the full amount of the balance on the subscription together with accrued interest, cost of advertisement, expenses of sale for the smallest number of shares or a fraction of shares. Okay. Now the stock purchased in a public auction shall be transferred to the highest bidder in the books of the corporation 
and a certificate of stock shall be issued in his favor under his name. Now, what is a certificate of stock? A certificate of stock is a written instrument signed by the proper officer of a corporation stating or acknowledging that the person named is the owner of a designated number of shares of stocks. Okay. Now, class, ito. Ano naman yung tinatawag natin na uncertified shares? Uncertified shares. Kung kanina, shares of stocks or certificate of stocks, meron naman tinatawag na uncertified shares. What is an uncertified share? It is a subscription duly recorded in the corporate books but has no corresponding certificate of stock yet issued. Class, naka-record na yan sa Stock and Transfer Book or the STB, pero wala pa siyang certificate of stock. Okay. Now, under Section 43.1 of the Securities Regulation Code, no, uh, the uncertified shares can be registered. So, ganito ang gagawin dyan, class. Kasi, class, minsan ang, ang subscription mo hindi pa fully paid. Pag hindi pa po fully paid ang subscription mo, hindi ka pa iisuhan ng certificate of stocks. Kaya nga class, yan ang ginagawa ng mga practitioners. Minsan, hindi nila fully paid yung, subscri yung subscription para hindi sila mag-issue ng certificate of stock. Kasi pag nag-issue ka niya, magbaba magbabayad ka pa ng DST, yung Documentary Stamp Tax. No? So, medyo cumbersome frame procedure. What they do, no, ini-issue nila yung shares, may paid up, pero hindi siya fully paid. Now, kung hindi ka pa fully paid, hindi ka pa issue ng certificate of stocks. But under Section 43.1 of the SRC, or the Securities Regulation Code, a corporation no, can issue a an uncertified shares. No, pwedeng i-record sa stock and transfer book na binili mo yung shares of stocks na to no, at mag issue sila ng uncertified securities. Ang tawag nila dyan, uncertified securities. Okay. Issuance. No certificate of stock shall be issued until the full amount is paid together with interest and expenses in case of a delinquent share. Okay. The payment pro rata, no, the corporation is not prohibited from dividing the subscription of the subscriber as fully paid, etc., etc. This is only granted to the corporation. Now, class, kahit hindi fully paid yung subscription mo, pwede pa rin mag-issue ng, ng certificate of stock. But this, is the own, this option is granted to the corporation. Again, the corporation can refuse issuance of a certificate of stock kung hindi pa fully paid. However, the corporation can waive full payment of the subscription and opt to issue a subscription contract. Again, class, I will have to emphasize that this option belongs to the corporation, meaning to say that the stockholder may not demand the issuance of a certificate of stock in the absence of full payment, no, as a matter of right. Okay. Pag nawala ang certificate of stock, you have to execute an affidavit of loss. These are the contents of the affidavit of loss. Paano siya nawala? Ilan ang number of shares mo? What is the name of the corporation? And that you have to undertake to submit other information or piece of evidence as he may deem necessary. And that the corporation must publish a notice in a newspaper of general circulation for three consecutive weeks regarding the loss of the certificate of sale. Okay. Now, class, pag na-publish ng corporation yung affidavit of loss, no? magbibilang ka ng isang taon bago ulit mag-issue ng new certificate of stock. Pero class, kung ayaw mo magantay ng isang taon, pwede kang mag-file ng bond or other security. Pag nag-file ka ng bond as required by the board, then kahit hindi mo naantayin yung one year, pwede ka nang isuhan ng certificate of stocks. Okay? Now, there are restrictions in the sale of shares. 
No, the SEC has allowed some restrictions on the transfer of shares in the Articles of Incorporation as long as it does not contravene Section 63 of the Corporation Code. Now, class, the only requirement imposed by the Corporation Code is that the restriction must appear in the AOI by laws and the Certificate of Stock and it should not be onerous or more onerous than, than granting the existing stockholders of the option to purchase the shares of transferring stockholder within reasonable terms, etc., etc. Okay. You can sell partially, no, partially paid shares. Kasi nga, class, pag hindi ka pa fully paid, wala ka pang certificate of stocks. But question, pwede mo bang ibenta yung yung shares of stocks mo kahit hindi pa siya fully paid? As a general rule, hindi pwede. No, no shares of stocks which the corporation holds an, any unpaid claim shall be transferable in the books of the corporation. In so far as the corporation is concerned, hindi mo pwedeng ibenta yung shares of stocks mo kung hindi pa siya fully paid. Now, the corporation may refuse to acknowledge and register a sale or assignment of shares which are not fully paid. No? Okay. But then again, class, pwede mo pa rin siyang ibenta sa ibang tao and that sale is binding between the seller, stockholder, and the buyer. But the corporation may refuse to, uh, to acknowledge the, the sale or the transfer of shares. Now, this refusal of the corporation may be waived. Ibig sabihin, class, pwedeng i-refuse ni corporation yung transfer of shares or pwede niya namang i-acknowledge. Now, pag in-acknowledge ni corporation no, yung transfer of shares, ang demand niya for the payment of the um, balance of the subscription will be made to the transferee and no longer to the uh, transferor. Okay. Yan lang ibig sabihin niya yung nasa screen niyo, class. Okay. okay, that's all for Title 6 and Title 7. See you again on the next episode. Thank you.